welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name is Camel and today we are going to acquire and inspect the unique shield, namely the Dawnguard Rune Shield, an ancient artifact used by vampire hunters of old, the Dawnguard. The Dawnguard before the one that we know as the Dawnguard now. Trust me, it's old and it's cool. Now a timestamp for the overview of the Dawnguard Rune Shield can be found down in the description along with links to my social media and to my other Skyrim special edition guides, be sure to check all of that out, but not before checking out this shield. And if you are following this guide on the Skyrim Standard Edition, you will need the Dawnguard DLC installed to acquire this item. So to get the Dawnguard Rune Shield, we will have had to have had sighted does that make sense? Who knows? With the Dawnguard faction, and finished at least up to the quest titled Bolstering the Ranks. Now, during this aforementioned quest, we will have recruited a strange man named Florentius Banius, a priest of Arcae. He is the guy we will receive the quest called Lost Relic from. And this is the quest we need to be on to get the Dawnguard Rune Shield. However, this quest is randomized amongst an array of other available side quests, and we can only get one at a time. So once we finish the Bolstering the Ranks quest, there are four Dawnguard members that we can get side quests from, and their ordering is absolutely random. These four characters are Florentius Banius, as mentioned, Isran, Gunmar, and Serene Gerard. Speak to any of them and ask, what can I do to help? Now you might get the Lost Relics quest straight away, or in my case, I had to finish 19 other side quests before getting the Lost Relics quest for the Dawnguard Rune Shield. So it can be quick and easy, or it can be long and painful. Some people have said that you can just reload a save and then walk back in and the quests will have re-randomized. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Now there are also three Lost Relic quests. From the other two, you will receive the Dawnguard Rune Hammer and the Dawnguard Rune Axe. So if you are interested in those items, links to my guides for them can can be found down in the description. So either straight away or after questing for five hours, this will happen. Speak with Florentius. He has something for you. Take care of yourself. Arke has been watching over me for years now. He says he's not too sure about you yet, though. I once killed 30 vampires with my bare hands, you know. Ask Arke, he'll tell you. What can I do to help? I've been poring over some of the tomes left here in the keep. Interesting stories indeed. Seems the previous incarnation of the Dawnguard had, at one time, some interesting toys. Arkay and I think it could be a great advantage for us. You should look into retrieving it. What is this artifact? A magical shield that when blocked with, surrounds its wielder with a holy aura that harms the undead. Might come in handy. Understood. Go with the light. So we'll be sent to a random radiant location to find the Dawnguard Rune Shield. A radiant location is one that is randomly chosen by the game. So there is no specific location that I can tell you to go to. It will be different every time for everyone. So just follow the quest marker or take note of where he told you to go. Now once at that specific location, find the chest or container that houses the Dawnguard Rune Shield. Once you find it, open it and take the shield. Of course, go back and hand the quest in, but for now, we have the shield, so let's check it out. The Dawn Guard Rune Shield. Its type of armor is light. It has a base armor rating of 27. So this is the same base armor as a glass shield and a dwarven shield, but given that the Dawnguard Rune Shield is light armor, I find comparing it to a glass shield is much more appropriate as they are in the same armor type class. Now, it can be upgraded with a steel ingot, and because the enchantment internally is recognized as a script and not an enchantment, it doesn't require the arcane smithing perk to be upgraded. However, with the Skyrim Special Edition unofficial patch, it will be recognized as an enchantment and therefore you will need the arcane smithing perk to upgrade it. And finally, it benefits from the advanced armor's perk, meaning that it can be upgraded all the way to legendary without the assistance of smithing fortification effects. And it's enchantment. 10 plus bash damage to vampires and sustained blocking creates a minor sun shield doing 10 points of damage at the cost of stamina. Now, unlike the Dawnguard Rune Axe, this enchantment does what it says it does. However, that's not great to be honest. 
I can confirm that while you hold down block, the sun shield damage only affects undead. So this shield's enchantments are totally useless against your everyday enemy, namely living enemies. And making it even more useless against even the undead is the unique bash damage enchantment which not only doesn't affect normal enemies, but it only affects vampires, making the shield even more of a niche item. Now if it did 10 plus damage to all undead, alright that's fine, it's still pretty niche and probably won't see much action, but 10 plus damage specifically to vampires, mm, not my favourite enchantment of all time. Look, if you side with the Dawnguard faction, which you have to to get the shield in the first place, then sure, this enchantment comes in handy while doing most of the Dawnguard questline. But after that, are you really going to carry around a shield just in case you run into some vampires so you can do 10 more bash damage? No. Absolutely not, it's too specific of an enchantment. Now the other half of the enchantment, again, it's quite specific, but it does deal damage to all undead, unlike the bash damage. So, while not being useful in every situation, there are a lot of dungeons and such in which most of the enemies are undead, like the Draugr. So yeah, it might find the use in everyday ancient Nordic tomb clearing, especially when paired with something like the Dawnguard Runax or Dawnbreaker both of which I do have guides for and are great for killing undead. Now if you want to use this shield with some holy crusader type build, you might want to think again. As the Dawnguard rune shield's unique enchantment, sun shield effect, is incredibly similar to the spell called Stendar's Aura. Now this spell creates a cloak-like effect of sunlight and deals damage to the surrounding undead, just like the shield's sustained blocking effect. Now the problem here is that Stendo's Aura is a centerpiece of most of, if not all, Holy Crusader type builds. It's a spell you chuck on yourself and it absolutely obliterates all the undead around you. Great, I mean, that's awesome. Well, the shield's effect, that acts pretty much exactly the same way, so surely using both at once would be even better. Well, sadly, there is no benefit in using both Stendar's Aura and the Dawnguard Rune Shield, more specifically its prolonged blocking effect Sun Shield, because Stendar's Aura cancels out the effect of the Dawnguard Rune Shield, rendering the shield's effect useless if used in conjunction with that spell, which again is pretty much the best centerpiece spell for a Holy Crusader build. So that makes the Dawnguard Rune Shield even more like eh. Now interestingly, unlike Stendar's Aura, which is classed as a restoration spell, despite having pretty much the exact same effect, the Dawnguard Rune Shield's Sun Shield effect is classed as a destruction spell, despite having pretty much the same effect and will actually count towards leveling up your destruction skill while it is active. Now as mentioned earlier, despite the shield's enchantment being recognized as a script rather than an enchantment, so it's technically unenchanted, but it cannot be enchanted further. However, that means the shield will also never need recharging because technically there's nothing to recharge. Now, because of the shield's cloak-like sun shield effect, sometimes NPCs will say, that spell looks dangerous, keep your distance, which is a dialogue line reserved for NPCs' reactions to the player character having a cloak spell active. And NPCs will even comment as such, regardless of whether the Dawn Guard Rune Shield's Sun Shield effect is active or not. All you need is it equipped, and NPCs will start freaking out. Well, they won't freak out, they'll just comment on it. So there you have the rundown of the Dawn Guard Rune Shield. Is it good? Well, it's good for clearing out dungeons of undead, the vampire bash damage, I mean sure, that's slightly helpful when fighting vampires, but for the most part, it's completely irrelevant. On the other side, the sun shield damaging undead is actually great, because of course, while you're blocking, you are protecting yourself, preventing damage being dealt to you, but while you do this, you can't deal damage to enemies. This enchantment fixes that situation and deals damage to undead around you while you're protecting yourself. So this way you get the best of both worlds at the cost of stamina draining, which I feel is fair, but it is something you want to keep your eye on because with a blocking build, you don't really want to run out of stamina at any point. So all in all, probably won't see much use. But if you really try, you can make it work, and I'm sure some people will come up with some really cool builds surrounding the Dawnguard Rune Shield. And it's also great for taking to the beach, as you will not get sunburnt. Why? Because the shield acts 
as Sunblock. And here it is, the Dawnguard Rune Shield in action. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for the unique shield, namely the Dawnguard Rune Shield. I do hope that this video helped you out, and if it did, you will be very interested in checking out my other Skyrim Special Edition guides that I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description, you can also find links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a heroic patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy. So your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.